We all live in a society that affects the way we think, the way we act, the way we interact with each other. It affects all kinds of people, young, old, men, women, people from different races, cultures, and backgrounds. So I, as I was reading a book about social uh, psychology, I read an interesting fact that everything affects the way you think. For example, you wake up in the morning, you open a paper, you read something in that news. For example, an, a news about a certain um, performer. You hear something about him. You subconsciously judge him. You're saying, what's that crazy man doing? Why is he doing that? Without even you knowing the person, you judge him. For example, you read about a mugging happening in a certain area. Subconsciously, you're not going to tag, take that route because you're going to think, maybe something's going to happen to me. The reaction of the audience right now to what I'm saying is actually going to affect the way I'm going to speak. So if minor things like this affect the way you sing, the way you interact with people, the way you act, how can big things like the rules of regulation of society, things that are engraved in your brain since you were small kids. So this brings me to my topic, which is the motivation effect of society and the motivation of women. What brought me to this idea I'm she. I forgot about it. Go. Well, you might ask, what is motivation? Motivation is the force that drives you to achieve your goals. So our lecturer asked us, what is your vision? What is your goal? He saw that young people in the Sudanese society weren't motivated. So he asked us, what is your vision? So he asked uh, three males and one female, uh, three females and one male, because uh, in architecture we have more females than males, and. The guy, he answered, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be in Forbes magazine. Although I think he stole the word from a lyric of another song. And he also said, I want to be a world known architect. When he asked the girls, their answers were vague. I want to have a career. In what, he asked them, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where. My ultimate, I don't know. So I asked three questions. The first question is where you, I asked a couple of people three questions. The first question is, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? What is your ultimate goal? I asked females and males. The males' answers were decisive. I want to be in America. I want to have my own firm in 10 years. The girls' answers were, I want to have a career and in five years. And then in 10 years, I want to get married. And it was switched. Either I want to be married in five years or I want to have a career in 10 years. You'll ask them, in what? Also, vague. And then their ultimate goal, not so sure. Why not? I don't know. I'm, raised, I'm not sure. Maybe something's going to happen on the way. So, this, uh, so I think this is based, although I ask these questions to young m females, college students, people who got into university. And we realized in the past 20 years, more girls have been able to get into college, to be able to get a degree. So that shows in acad academically they can achieve that. They can actually reach university level. But then when you go to a workforce, you find that there are less girls. Because even when you go to get a job, some certain workplaces, they say, we don't want females, we want males. And I thought, why don't people want to achieve their dreams? What is the problem? And there was two factors. And I think one, in my opinion, is one, the formula. You might ask me what the formula is. The formula is, people in Sudan here, they think, for example, the woman, she stays at home, the, uh, the, ma the man, he goes to work, and the kids, uh, of course, go study to school or whatever. But that doesn't have to be the case. We had um, our neighbors in England, the man, he had a job in a computer science. So he stayed at home, the female, she had a job, and then the kids, of course, went to school. So that's not the scenario that has to always be there, but a person should keep an open mind for different scenarios. And then the other thing, uh, have any one of you saw the video, Al Iris Al Iris, made by a young artist, I mean, Behari, a very good artist. And the thing is, if you haven't seen it, Iris Al Iris means marriage, marriage. If you haven't seen it, it's about a young girl who wants to achieve things. So every time she goes and she tries to do something, for example, become a businesswoman, her mother says, al iris al iris. She goes to another thing, her mother says, al iris al iris. Even when she gets married, her mother says, al wilada al wilada. <laughs> so even whatever she wants to do, she can't actually achieve her goals. So 
That brings me to another case study. There was a study that said that educated women could not bear children. That was in the 1980s in America. Not, cannot, will not bear children, cannot bear children. Like, physically, they can't. And then suddenly, one day, an educated woman was able to bear a child. I think that was very awkward for them at that moment. But the thing is, this shows us that things around you tell you that you cannot do anything. You cannot achieve your dreams. A scientific science. There are examples. There are a lot of examples of women who were able to do a lot. The pictures aren't shown here. Very sorry, something happened. Like in one of them is Helen Keller. She was uh, blind. She could not hear. She wrote one of the maiden novels. There is another uh, example. Bessie Coleman. She was the first aviator in the 19, uh, I guess, 30s or 40s. She was black. She was a female. When things were against her, she was able to achieve that. There's also one who was um, Willem Rudolph, she, she had polio. She was paralyzed until she was age of uh, four, she, until she was age of 10, and she fought it, and she became the first female to win a triple gold medal in Olympics. So why do we go to foreign examples? There are local examples. Uh, um, Fatma Hamdi Ibrahim was the first woman to get into uh, parliament by election. Khalde Zahir was the first woman to be able to become a medical student and go into university and people who are able to achieve so much more. So my point is, if you have a dream, if you want to achieve it, you being a female does not stop you. Work for your dream, even if the society is against you, even if people tell you cannot do it. You can achieve whatever you want to do. And thank you.